Browser-based games have held their place on the internet since the 1990s. Neopets started raking in millions of page views a month over 20 years ago. Since then, the diversity of browser-based games have exploded. There are games like Chicken Smoothie, Lydon, RuneScape, Cookie Clicker, just to name a few. With the advent of crowdfunding, over $100,000 have flowed directly to the development of new browser games. One of these games is Dapper Volk. Dapper Volk is a role-playing game with questing, crafting, and pet collection features. Despite raising over $73,000 from 1,300 backers less than a year in, the playership is a fraction of what it was at launch. What was the special allure of Dapper Volk? Why did backers fund the site, only for the majority of them to abandon it shortly after launch? How can such a pretty game have rich users? What can Dapper Volk do to stop itself from killing fun when it's turned players back and attract new players? Dapper Volk is a virtual pet game and avatar site with role-playing game elements. The lead developer, Quizlings, compared the game to Gaia Online, Tattered Weave, Harvest Moon, Animal Crossing, and Neopets. Even before Dapper Volk, Quizlings had an active following on her Divine Art page and traded art on the browser-based pet game Iwas. As early as 2016, Quizlings mentioned her idea for Dapper Volk to members of her fandom on Iwas. The core concept is that you play as a world hopper, a character that can travel between realms. Users can alchemize items into other items, or items into animals, or animals into other animals. You get quests from non-playable characters and develop relationships with those non-playable characters and your animals as you interact with them. The concept art and guiding philosophies behind the game design led to a very successful Kickstarter campaign. When the crowdfunding campaign launched, Quizling's longtime supporters had been waiting to support her however they could. The users saw her talent and wanted to be immersed in a world of Quizling's design. Additionally, the campaign took place after the first alpha test of the game. I was an alpha tester and documented my experience on this channel. Other testers relayed positive feedback of the game and shared screenshots and written reviews ahead of the crowdfunding. Hosting the game's alpha test before launching the campaign was a marketing method that allowed reviews and snapshots of the game to circulate and build momentum for the Kickstarter. Before and following the campaign, Quizling hosted Twitch streams where she would interact with the audience and tease game content. This was another marketing technique that allowed spectators to develop a parasocial relationship and develop trust in the development team. All of these factors contributed to the crowdfunding campaign reaching its $15,000 campaign goal within its first two hours. It would ultimately raise over 70,000 United States dollars from 1,300 backers. Seven years before Dapper Volk, the genre record was set by another browser-based virtual pet game called Flight Rising, which raised $38,000 on its Kickstarter. While Dabbervolk outraised Fly Rising, its time on the leaderboard wouldn't last. At the time of editing this, there are about 2,800 active users online on Flight Rising and 251 active users online on Dabbervolk. Where did all of the users go? In the days following Dapper Volk's official launch, Flight Rising and Chicken Smoothie were filled with forum threads of users unloading their items in exchange for Dapper Volk items. I had never seen such a mass exodus from one game to another. At the same time, my tracking of usership on Dapper Volk debuted at 2,000 users, while Flight Rising, which usually had 3,000 users, fell to the mid-2000s. But that popularity was short-lived. By mid-August 2020, Dapper Volk's usual users online number fell under 1,000 users and has yet to recover. The Google Trends data mirrors my users online record keeping. Google Trends shows relative search interest with the 100 point being the more search day and topic. In the past 12 months, Dapper Volk outranked Flight Rising searches from mid-June through mid-July. After July 25th, Dapper Volk searches dramatically reduced and Flight Rising recovered its top position. During its short popularity peak, drama surrounding gacha games began circulating. A gacha game induces players to spend currency to receive a random virtual item. Most of the shops on Dapper Volk are ran by gacha. The specific drama surrounded the employment of a gacha game in a paid currency shop, meaning that users would buy a premium currency with real-world money, but instead of being able to outright purchase the items they wanted, users had to gamble. Critics of the gacha shop style compared the mechanic to a loot box. 
Back in 2017, video game loot boxes stirred up a good deal of drama across the internet as they cropped up in game after game. In an infamous Reddit post, the EA community team defended loot boxes in Star Wars Battlefront with this comment. The intent is to provide players with a sense of pride and accomplishment for unlocking different heroes. This comment quickly became the most unpopular comment on Reddit and currently has negative 668,000 points. Users were outraged that EA would claim that unlocking content with loot boxes would give a player pride or a sense of accomplishment, when the alternative would be grinding through days and hours to unlock the same content without paying. The outrage on Dabbervolk boiled down to loot boxes being gambling, or at the least, exploitative and expensive features that make games less enjoyable. Dabbervolk had launched with a very controversial feature in main focus. This was a turnoff for many users and led to a wave of exits. Even after the premium currency shop deactivated its gotcha, those users didn't return. If it were only the gacha fiasco, maybe Dappervolk wouldn't have seen such a dramatic reduction in users, but there was another tension point users faced that worked as a roadblock to keep users from rapidly progressing in the game. Dappervolk commits one of the worst crimes a game can. It gets in the way of users having fun. Starting with introducing tedium, then de-incentivizing participating in intrinsically enjoyable aspects, and then failing to proportionately reward efforts. The gameplay relies on tedium as a core design concept. Game progression in Dapper Volk hedges on users completing miniature repeatable quests, character-driven side quests, and one long-term main quest line. The long-term main quest line is not meant to be sped through, and it can't be speedran. You're required to take your time completing the game. That might be less of a big deal if the repeated and side quests were short as well. I started playing Dapper Volk on a daily basis to prepare for this video. One day it took me two hours to complete the repeatable daily quests, excluding side quests and the main quest line. Most days it took at least one hour. This may be excusable if it was interesting, fun content, but most of these quests are the same quests over and over again. The time commitment to fulfill a day's work is just too long and too boring for most users to stick with a game. This takes us right back to games providing a sense of pride and accomplishment. Dapper Volk requires users to grind to get rewards, but if those rewards don't match the effort, who's going to feel proud or accomplished? The realization that game progress would be slow was the cause of the exodus that caused Dapper Volk's usership to fall even further. The worst part is that while Dapper Volk demands a high time commitment, after you complete daily quests, there's not much else to do. This opens up the dissonance of the site having both too much for users to do and not enough for users to enjoy. Or like this user said while explaining why they left Dapper Volk, the whole daily quest and stuff that you had to do in order to progress was just a nope for me. Cute art and fun customization, but not enough to keep me there daily. Here's another user in the Dapper Volk forum saying pretty much the same thing, but with the added color that it's from someone who continues to log into Dapper Volk after recognizing the flaw. While there is a case to be made that you can log into Dapper Volk for short chunks if you want to, it's not really satisfying. To earn meaningful rewards or progress in the game, you have to spend quite a bit of time. So small chunks of time are out, but large chunks of time are also out because there isn't really anything left to do once you've completed your dailies. Dabbervolk tries to give the impression that there's lots to do, but in actuality, most of it is mandatory drudgery. The mandatory drudgery of repetitive tasks is a regular point of contention. Here's the lay of the land. Each day, a user can move between towns three times. In each town, there are a handful of NPCs that give seven repeatable quests a day. There aren't seven unique quests, they're a random pick from a few quests written for each character. While these aren't exactly difficult quests, they can be time consuming or frustrating when a user has to repeat the same one multiple times. A user is only presented with seven quests a day from a non-playable character. A rejected quest is counted as an expended quest, and if a user rejects four quests, that's taken from the total of quests they can do for that character that day. Here's a good criticism of the repetitive quests. Half of Magdalene's daily quests were to spin a chance machine three times. 
I have to spend 500 to 600 potatoes up to 12 times to finish these quests on stuff I don't want. She only offered me two different quests, and since saying no waste a quest and gives no reward, I have to do it. The other quest she offers is to play a game three times. I purposefully lose immediately two times. Same thing with another character's constant quests. Another non-playable character only gives two or three quests, and I've noticed that most are to play that same game. The other is to give him plump turnips, which I have to give to four different non-playable characters, so I end up spending almost all ten of my daily winnings from a game to get enough plump turnips for everyone. The system would be better if each character had seven different daily quests. I'm not sure anyone enjoys doing the same thing up to five times, especially stuff that depletes resources. I finally had enough plump turnips today to incubate one since everyone kept asking me for them from playing the game ten times. I mean, it's nice when you have to do the easy ones four times, but not very fun anyway. Game design criticisms can get technical with time measurements or cost to benefit calculations, but at the end of the day, isn't it all about having fun? I personally find the questing to be a fun desert. The process of completing these seven quests per character is a time-consuming activity that could be fun with variation, but instead it's doing the same two to three actions for a character seven times. The repetition on its own wouldn't be a big deal if the reward for doing the repeated tasks outweighed the drudgery of completing the tasks. But according to the users who play, the grind and time suck of these tasks hurt playability. As I mentioned earlier, I clocked a game session where it took two hours for me to complete my Dapper Bulk daily quests. Most of the time, that's closer to one than two hours. That sets Dapper Volk wildly apart from the other games in the genre. I recorded my daily sessions on Neopets, Maropets, and Flight Rising to compare with Dapper Volk. While all of these games are very different from one another, they are directly compared by users who play them. They form a cohort that the same users participate in. It's normal for a user to play multiple games in this genre instead of picking just one. Flight Rising took 10 and a half minutes, Neopets took 13, Maropets took 20, and Dapper Volk took an hour and a half. Competing with other games isn't just about getting the playtime down, it's maximizing the sense of achievement earned in that playtime. 10 minutes on Flight Rising can be far more rewarding than an hour on Dabber Volk because there's no grind. At the same time, I can easily spend 4 hours on Flight Rising, Neopets, or Maropets when I find myself in a state of flow. If you're not familiar with flow theory, Mihai Csikszentmihalyi Mihai describes flow as the state of concentration and engagement that can be achieved when completing a task that challenges one's skills. In my personal experience, runners high is a sort of flow. Sometimes when I'm cooking, I enter flow, and when I'm editing videos, time melts away because I enter flow. My favorite parts of the games I play are when I enter flow and I can easily spend hours planning my flight rising breeding schedule or completing tasks and restocking my Mara Pet shop. In The Gamer's Brain by Celia Hodent, Hodent dives into game flow, the part of games that tap into flow theory. Game flow was first described by Penelope Sweetser and Peter Wyeth in their paper Game Flow, a model for evaluating player enjoyment in games. Game flow breaks down into eight elements. Concentration, challenge, skill, control, clear goals, feedback, immersion, and social interaction. I can't enter flow on Dapper Volk. When the daily events are over, there aren't many activities that give me that immediate feedback based on skill or concentration. I regularly feel frustrated disengagement that discourages me from exploring other features of the game beyond questing and the necessary amount of alchemy. That's a shame because there are some intrinsically enjoyable minigames on Dapper Volk, like the entire pet management minigame. This game includes hatching pets, interacting with them, and getting rewards for that activity, but this process actively hinders itself with some of the time gates imposed on it. Here's how the minigame process works. A user can hatch an item to create a pet. This usually takes about 12 hours and only one item can be hatched at a time. After the pet is hatched, each day a user can interact with that pet by completing a task for the pet, petting it, chatting with it, gifting it something it specifically requests, or feeding it. As you interact with your pet over the span of multiple days, its affection points will grow and each affection milestone grants the user a gift. 
Other people can see your pet's affection status. This is the type of rewarding, challenging, social, intrinsically enjoyable minigame that would be a huge draw on Dapper Volk if it didn't tie itself to the questing structure in a very unfortunate way. Let me explain. Various daily quests require the player to interact with their pets. These quests are repetitive and take up a good deal of time, up to two hours in my experience. There are limited times users can interact with their pets because there are finite amounts of actions for a finite amount of pets. Therefore, a user who has a limited amount of time on the website, who knows that they frequently get bored of the game by the time they've completed their daily tasks, will put off interacting with their pets until after a non-playable character has requested that they do so. Theoretically, a user could enter the game flow state by playing with all of their pets in bulk at the beginning of the game session. But then, when the player goes questing, it's not like the cumulative amount of pet interactions are taken into consideration for quests. It doesn't matter if you've fed your pets 100 times. You have to do an incremental three feedings for each quest. And if you've already interacted with all of your pets, you won't be able to complete those quests because it resets after each time it requests for you to feed your pet. This de-incentivizes users doing the pet minigame on their own and actively fence off the opportunity for a user to enter that flow state. A great way to course correct would be by allowing events to pull instead of requesting incremental events and questing. Let's say I went to a shop and I played the gacha 20 times. When I now go to an NPC who wants me to play a gacha, I could immediately turn in my quest because I've already played a gacha 20 times. My cool of completed gacha transactions for that day would then de decrease to 19. The next time a non-playable character requests a gacha, I wouldn't be required to do more gachas because it could draw from the next one stored up gacha use. This would continue until I didn't have any more stored up, in which case I would have to play more gachas. Instead of prohibiting users to enter flow with things like interacting with the economy, the overall amount of trades a user completes at the beginning of the day could then assist users in blowing through quests that require they complete a trade because they already completed trades when they logged in while in a game flow state. This would also free up the trades market from redundant trades that people aren't actually looking to use. This is win-win. Users don't think of activities being as repetitive when they have the freedom to complete them as they please. If I see item management as a minigame and manage my trades on my own time to fit my own goals of amassing wealth at the beginning of a play session, I'm less likely to see it as a tedious event. This is a broad sweeping infrastructure change that would affect nearly every type of quest except for the part that this is already how many of the quests work. Take, for instance, a character request for a certain item. If I have a stock of that item on hand, I can draw from the pool of items I acquired before receiving this quest to complete the quest immediately. I don't have to get new shoes just because I've only now been asked for them. I can give shoes I already own. It's the same philosophy. It doesn't make sense to me that I can buy from a gacha shop 20 times, but the moment I return a quest that asks for me to buy from a gacha one time, my overall account total of purchases resets to zero. This absolutely decentivizes playing aspects of the game until a non-playable character requests it. The last seven months haven't been kind of Dapper Volk, but there's hope for them to pull out of this nosedive. That hope is mostly held by Dapper Volk's active users, who recognize the faults in the game and brainstorm solutions on the Dapper Volk forums, Reddit, and anywhere the topic comes up. These devoted fans have put together clear recommendations to fix the game. There is an on-site economy that could provide entertainment and a steady income for active players if it was optimized for ease of use. A junior user experience designer named Nat Dora investigated and is in the process of developing a recommendation for the Dapper Volk team to edit the trades market. They're doing it on their own volition, and while I commend them for the work they've done, the Dapper Volk team should 100% throw some Benjamins their way because they've done great work on this project and it would be good PR. 
In the exploration phase, not to rest listed feedback like, users want to quickly and easily see what they should sell their items for without having to open trades in a new tab and search for the item. Several expressed a desire for an autofill function. Then Natura put together a preliminary sketch and will mock up layouts for the new catalog browsing options. Right now, using the trades market is a time consuming process that I can't justify spending much time on. As of January 26th, 2021, the admins have acknowledged that the grind is a problem. The team will publish a roadmap detailing plan adjustments when they're ready. It's reassuring to hear that this is in the pipeline, but it's frustrating to hear these fixes don't have a projected delivery date. Back in my first Alpha Game Review in 2017, I emphasized the importance of a sense of achievement in every gameplay session and a competitive game session length where Dabbervolt competes for share of game time instead of trying to win entire users. It's unlikely that users will pick an hour in Dabbervolt instead of an hour divided between Flight Rising, Neopets, and Lyodin. Do you remember that story about the people who wanted faster elevators? There was a multi-story office building where the tenants used the elevators to traverse the building's floors. After some time, the occupants started complaining that the elevators were too slow and that they were going to break their leases if the building didn't get faster elevators. The building management team consulted with staff and engineers and ultimately came to the conclusion that they couldn't get faster elevators. Something else would have to change. The building manager decided to install mirrors in the elevator lobbies and complaints subsided. People may believe that their problem is one thing when the reality is that they're unengaged. I don't think that all of the solutions to reversing the player drop-off on Dapper Bulk are obvious. Maybe a challenge is that users don't know how close they are to completing a major task or don't have the motivation to keep playing because they don't know what else is to come. Solutions there would be status bars or having locations visible on the map, but transparent or grayscale until formally discovered in gameplay. Hodent offers this advice in the gamer's brain. Showing players that undiscovered zones exist and that they require a competence to enter is a clear and sometimes meaningful goal. Remember to provide clear feedback regarding users' progression and especially which goals are close to completion because this might encourage players to play just a little more to accomplish that goal. Providing clear information regarding the progress made and what is left to accomplish is a critical element to competence. Until we see some alterations in the gameplay structure, the majority of players who've backed Dapper Volk's crowdfunding will continue to stay clear of the site. While admins say the changes are coming, they don't have an estimated delivery date for spectators to keep an eye on. Hi, Questlings and company. Here's my direct address to you. Players will be more forgiving about the development putting off long-term projects if it means immediate quality of life enhancements that the players interact with multiple times every day. Every day that the questing is a nightmare is another day of a bad gameplay experience, while an additional month without a new feature is another regular month. People are more hindered by an ongoing negative experience than a delay to a new experience. Instead of accruing a user base that loves the experience, the upset user base is receding every day that questing is tedious and grindy. Attempting to alleviate frustrations associated with the grind signals to the active user base and more importantly, spectators, potential users, and lapsed users that fixes are ongoing and problems are acknowledged. Course correction is marketing, and right now Dapper Volk has really bad PR. I enjoy the art style of Dapper Volk and find a lot of charm in its systems. I respect you all immensely and acknowledge that developing a browser-based game is an insane and unforgiving undertaking. Remember how Flight Rising was closed with limited registration while it developed for years? I absolutely get that and how it makes these growing pains less obvious. <laughs> I'm on your side, and I hope that you guys turn this around. I'm cheering for you. I'm rooting for you. We're all rooting for you. Now I'm going to address my subscribers. Shout out to Connor Evans, who I think might be involved in Everskies, who recommended I try a commentary in history like Izzy's. If you guys can't tell, I'm channeling some of her elements in this video and trying to find the secret sauce of her style. I hope it's not her accent. I really hope it's not clown makeup because I'm not going to wear clown makeup. 
Brenna Kunha also recommended I do criticisms of specific pet sites with how to improve game design. I'm working my way through all of those comments about what sort of content I should make. It's my goal to give them all a try in 2021, so let's see how far we can ride this. Oh yeah, I also wanted to do a miniature book review on The Gamer's Brain by Celia Hodent. I love user experience design and um, I fantasize that I am a user experience designer. I've taken online courses, I've re read so many textbooks. This is the latest textbook that I've read on user experience design. And it's about neuroscience and user experience design and game design and all three of those things together. And if you are a game designer or you dream of being a game designer or you just really enjoy the type of content I make, this is like the best book that I've read because it takes everything together, right? I've read so many textbooks on UX and it's like, okay, yes, we get hierarchy, we get contrast, but how do you make it more enjoyable to play the game? And as you could tell, I love it. I really enjoy this book. I reached out to Celia Hodent and I got a signed copy of her most recent book. And I'm just telling you guys, I really strongly recommend this book if you're interested in becoming more familiar with these topics and how they work together. So it's no secret that my favorite part of the video is when I now get to talk about everything that contradicts what I just said. So first and foremost, there's no internet police. Quizlings doesn't have to change anything about her game. She has a great sense of taste that is incredibly refined. And very early on, I learned that that is just how the game was gonna operate. There was a Discord or a Twitch where I had asked the team like, hey, I see that you're gonna retire items after the Kickstarter. I personally don't prefer that. What's up with that? And Quizlings said, you know, that's the kind of game I like. I like it when there are collectibles and some of them retire. And that's a perfectly acceptable reason to retire items. It's personal taste. If you can't make the game that you want, then why make a game at all? That being said, I'm going to make a comparison that I need you to just take on with me, okay? Just like, give it a try. Dabber Volk is kind of like Mara Pets in the sense that if personal taste was compromised, the ceiling for success could lift. Do I think that there are alternative ways to lift the ceiling? Sure, but compromising personal taste definitely could help. I think that the game could be successful the way it is. Eventually, maybe things will pick up. Maybe it's already successful and nothing has to change. Maybe changing a lot of things would help. Who am I to say? I enjoy the game that it is right now. It took about 10 hours of gameplay where I hated the game over five days. More time than most people would play. More time than I've seen in comments where people said, I gave it a try, I couldn't do it, I left. That is the most common story that I've heard. My experience where I was playing the game and I really disliked it because it was tedious, it was boring, I was beyond skull numbed, I was fuzzy brained, not enjoying it for 10 hours, over five days. I stuck with it because I was making a YouTube video and I told myself, I have to learn how to enjoy the game. And this is the common story for people who still play Dapper Volk, who continued playing after that initial, this game is kind of boring. This game is kind of, kind of slow. And it's accepting that progress will be slow and that you can't complete every daily. I complete maybe two thirds of the dailies every day, but I complete everything that I want to do. I sell stuff in the trading post. I interact with my pets. I interact with some NPCs and I have a really good time. But most people won't get there if they don't know that they have to make that mental leap. And how do they do that? How do they learn that? I don't know. That's an education problem. It's a game flow problem. Maybe completely remove the cap of quests from some of the early characters. Like maybe Louise Hill, you could do those quests unlimitedly. Like maybe that'll teach users that you won't be able to complete every quest. I don't know. I've been really noodling on it because it's, it's like an education problem. It's a self-acceptance problem and it's not intuitive. I really like this game. Um, I appreciate it. I really hope that it's successful. I'm interested in seeing 
the quality of life updates as they're implemented, I am a little frustrated that things I called out in 2017 are still active problems that are just getting acknowledged in like January 2021. But I do like the game and I'm sticking with it. So, hope you guys enjoyed it. <laughs>